Before getting into this video, I figured I would advise a heavy spoiler warning here. This video will discuss the events after and during Replicants Ending D and E. New information was provided by the recently translated Grimoire Near Revised and the secret short story If You Remove the Dust Jacket. As someone who reads children's books to my students, I'm always curious to remove dust jackets and find little secrets, and I was not disappointed with the secret in Grimoire Near Revised. After the events of Replicants Ending D, the world began to crumble even more than how it was before. Shades no longer had their lord, causing gestalts and replicants to senselessly murder each other. Some people might not even know this, but the ending E we received in Replicant version 1.22 was not the same ending E from the short story The Lost World. The original release of Near and Near Replicant only contained endings A through D, leaving players to wonder what happened to Kaine after Near sacrificed his existence to save her. But with the release of Grimoire Nier in Japan a month after the game's original release, fans were able to read various short stories about the characters and the world itself. One of these stories was called The Lost World, taking place three years after the events of Ending D, Kaine, who had been experiencing nightmares after she saved Yona and defeated the Shadow Lord, discovers a secret within the Forest of Myth. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that sounds a lot like the actual ending E found within Replicant version 1.22, and you're right. However, there are differences between the short story and the events within the game. The short story takes place entirely within the Forest of Myth, with the combination of Machine and Flora, there are no moments where Kaine goes inside the tree, nor does she go inside this automata-esque environment. She also does not reunite with Grimoire Vice at all, but she did still hear his voice after bringing Nier back. The major difference, and the sole reason why I wanted to make this video, was that the female administrator twin was never in the original story. In the short story, the male administrator was the only one present, revealing himself to Kaine within the Forest of Myth, telling her that he was in charge of the computer within the forest, which was built with the fusion of quantum mechanics and meso, revealing that Project Gestalt was managed throughout various regions, noting that if a region is designated a failure, the computer would clean things up by freezing the Gestalts until people from other regions would come and rescue them. Also a brief mention that the machines within the junk heap were created to exterminate replicants. Besides Kaine destroying the meso-infused tree itself to bring back Nier, the story ends the same exact way as ending E within Replicant version 1.22. However, on the very last page of the book, there is this angelic text, and when translated it says, and the story continues behind the cover. It's true. Behind the Dust Jacket is a new short story called The Lost World, Appendix version 1.22, yada yada yada, you know the deal. This short story is not mentioned anywhere within the book, not even inside the table of contents, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of you didn't even know about this. When I initially got the book and removed the wrapping, I was curious to see if there was an alternate cover behind the dust jacket, which, it's true, but I did not expect to see a new story hidden inside. But what exactly is this short story? It is told from the male administrator's perspective, taking place after the game's version of ending E. It starts to make me wonder if there's two separate timelines with the original The Lost World story within the book itself, and then the alternate universe of Replicant 1.22 and this appendix being the epilogue to the game's version of ending E. This story reveals that the male administrator had experienced losing to Kaine thousands of times before. It begins with him waking up close to an ocean, yet a dark forest suddenly appeared before him. He could not stop thinking about Kaine and how she was able to accomplish a miracle, bringing back someone who had erased themselves. Unsure why he was punished with experiencing these events countless times, it tormented him leading him to create a clone of himself with his rib. 
awfully familiar to one and her clone brother. He wanted to be with someone, but even with her, they both were still obliterated, wondering if this was the path to become human. But then the term death journey floated in his mind. Maybe he was indeed dead. A tower then appeared before him. He thought it would be important for him to climb it in order to reach the next world. As he climbed the tower, he started to relive old memories. A red dragon. A black plague. The assembled recollection of humanity. The miracle Kaine performed. Project Gestalt and the administrator were gone. The resurrection of mankind could no longer be achieved. He wasn't sure if his punishment was appropriate, but it wasn't his decision to make. At first he came to terms with his end, glad that he was now able to finally feel some form of relief. This feeling didn't last long. He unexpectedly started to shout no, he was not ready to die. He was scared and lonely. His sister was created, well, born. For him to resist the path of destruction, he was forced to follow many times. She instilled the concept of fear within him, as well as the meaning of his existence. After clearing his mind, he was still within the room inside the tower. A jet black hand emerged, chasing him down the tower. Managing to escape, the air outside was so cold it flayed his skin, yet the ground was so hot it burned his feet. Falling to the ground, he was covered with thorns sharp as needles. The path ahead was filled with mountains of needles. The black hand continued pursuing without pause. It began to rain blood. His own boiling blood stabbed him from the sky, each drop punching and burning. The forest then shattered. Chunks of debris knocked him off his feet and tumbled onto the path of needles piercing one side of his face as his severed arm thuds on the other side. The wood and the blood fused together to create a giant serpent. Again, he questioned if this was his punishment for trying to defy death by creating a clone of himself. He was angry at his creators, acknowledging he was not without sin, yet the world was already full of it. He didn't understand why he deserved such agony. Picking up his severed arm and biting off the bone from flesh, it transformed into a razor-sharp sword. The serpent engulfed him and pierced its fangs through him, yet he used the sword to slash through its jaws, throat, and stomach. As soon as he escaped the stomach, another serpent bit him. As dozens of snakes emerged and fought against each other to have the right to consume him. Pain. Death sorrow. This is how he was at the end of it all, surrounded by the corpses of all the snakes, looking out at the ocean again, knowing he was to be born again to relive the same curse. It's unknown exactly what the administrator is, but he was part of the computer system used for Project Gestalt. With it ending, I wouldn't be surprised if he was left experiencing the suffering indefinitely. What were your thoughts about the Lost World Appendix and the entirety of Grimoire Near Revised? I would love to read your comments. Take care, and I'll see you soon.